Hey you guys, welcome to Black Lion After Hours. I'm Shan Ferdinand and I'm here with the amazing Carrie Ferdinand. One each. We're here talking about the steps required to purchase a house. We're gonna break it down step by step from beginning to end, starting with checking your credit score. So let's get into it. Black Lion Realty is the best. And the road's finest. What else did you think I was gonna say? Listen, we're just here to dominate. No more, no less. Hey man, I'm telling you, when it comes to this real estate, anybody can win. You gotta know when to take your chance. <laughs> Absolutely. It's Black Line after hours. Let's go. We talk about checking your credit score. That is probably the top thing or the most important thing you want to do because without checking your credit score, you don't have a good understanding, which is going to lead us into step two, but you don't have an understanding of how much you could afford and what steps do you have to take. So you want to start looking at your credit score about three to six months out if you know that purchase on a home is something that you want to do in the future. Yeah, I was going to say that, you know, if you want to purchase a house, definitely start that process early because sometimes there might be work required. There might be things that you have to do in order to improve your credit to get it to where it needs to be in order to purchase a house. A lot of times people want to go to credit repair companies mm -hmm. and your credit repair companies, they're great, but they want to make a dollar ensuring that they have repeat business. Every business wants to do that. So our recommendation is start with a mortgage lender mm -hmm. um, so they can go ahead and dial in exactly what it is that you want to do and they can tell you which angles, which way to go with it um, to start with as opposed to just throwing a dart in the dark and hoping you hit your bullseye. So we recommend finding a good lender. Uh, most lenders are going to give it to you for free. Um, yeah, the lenders, they have um, software that allows them to do what if scenarios, you know, so they'll put your credit, they'll pull your score and they'll tell you if you do this, this, this and that, it'll get your score here. Or if you do this, this, that and this, then it'll get your score here. So they can, like, like Carrie said, they can dial in and tell, tell you what it is that you need to, exactly what you need to do to get your score where it needs to be in order to qualify for a mortgage loan. And interestingly enough, there are uh, Credit Karma, MyFICO, and this is not me pushing any particular brands, but there are places that you could go early before you're even talking to a mortgage lender to get a good understanding, but that's just a snapshot. Mm -hmm. um, a good way to look at it, one of my mortgage lenders tells me is if you can see two of your scores, you have a great understanding of where you're sitting at. So, for example, if you have one score at a, two of your scores come up to above 630, 640, Chances are you're already in the neighborhood to purchase house because if the last score is a 540, um, obviously they're looking at the, the middle score and they're averaging the scores together. So you have you have the scores. And when I say taking the scores and consider um, taking the three scores, it's the actual three scores. So we're not averaging the scores. We're taking the um, the middle score. So 630, 635, and 650. They're going to look at the 635. And what are the credit bureaus? Oh man, you're gonna ask me that. <laughs> TransUnion, Equifax, and the other guy. Experience. I experience. I always forget one of the three. Mm -hmm. And just going back to uh, Carrie touched on the topic of credit repair companies. A lot of times they're gonna charge you. He said they want you know they're just in it to make a dollar. A lot of times they want to charge you for things that you can actually do yourself. So like he said, definitely start by going to a mortgage lender and having them pull your score. Now, quick caveat on that. There are some really fine and really good um, credit repair people, but it's hard to find and you must do your due diligence. If they out there, but one of the red flags is if someone, if a credit repair company promises to remove something like a student loan balance from your uh, credit report, it's a red flag. Um, because there are things that you just can't do when it comes to your uh, credit report. And I know that we're going to get a lot of flack from different agents. These are our recommendations and these are the things that we've seen work well. Again, go to your mortgage broker or mortgage company, your loan officer and talk to that person first because they typically want to see you purchase a house. So they have a dog in the fight, if you will. They have some skin in the game and they want to see you actually purchase the house. So for me, 
I would go with that person as opposed to somebody who's making money off of fixing your credit or repairing your credit. And I just want to touch on real quick a few things that you can look for that on your credit report that might affect your credit you know your credit standing um so you want to verify that there are no that there's no inaccurate information on your credit report for example your name you know your date of birth address um, employment history those types of things you want to make sure they're accurate you also want to look at your payment history to make sure that you know that's being reported correctly um and Take a look at you know the credit pools, take a look at the accounts that are on your credit report. Say there's something reported that you didn't pay when in fact you did pay it. You can report that to the credit bureau um, and dispute that and provide proof and it can be removed. So just make sure that the information on your credit report is as accurate as possible. And there are a lot of things that you could do for yourself as well. Um, you, could, you could get the app, uh, again, I use MyFICO, that's me personally, this is not a plug for them. I'm not getting paid any money for MyFICO. They have a paid version and they also have a free version. The free version is just as good. Um, what you could do is you could go on there and you could actually make disputes on MyFICO. You could actually go to Experian TransUnion and who's the other guy? Equifax. Equ 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 Equifax. So you could do those things as well. You don't necessarily have to hire somebody, but if you feel like there's somebody out there that can help you definitely, definitely tap into it or just give us a call. And don't be um, off put or frightened if you look at your credit scores and they're all different. That's perfectly normal. Each uh, bureau reports different things at different times and some um, bureaus report some things while other bureaus report other things. So it's perfectly normal to have three different credit scores. So. Um, checking your credit score and making sure the information is accurate, it kind of ties into the next topic, which is determining how much you can afford. You know, and your credit score, in addition to your income, and then going to a mortgage lender, those are all things that you have to do um, to determine how much you can afford. Absolutely. So how much you can afford is a determination on a creditworthiness. So that's why we start with your credit. Two, how much you actually earn and keep, the, what your disposable income is looking like. And a big thing here is, and I think this is a good, plug, good time to plug taxes mm -hmm. and how taxes are done. So for example, if you have a W-2, this is usually not a problem because you have somebody reporting for you. But this is mainly for our 1099, say our truck drivers, real estate professionals, um, cleaners, right? anybody who's self-employed. A lot of times the train of thought is we're going to go ahead and deduct everything so we realize more, we're going to deduct our expenses to realize more of our income throughout the year. But what ends up happening is you go to purchase this property and you can't purchase the property because you just told Uncle Sam that you make no money. And when the bank looks at it, they're looking and saying, well, I see that you made 100,000, 200,000 for the year. However, you spent 105, 195, and you're telling them, uh, you're telling whoever's looking, your loan officer, mm -hmm. you're telling them that you have, you don't, you don't earn enough disposable income to put yourself in a property. Exactly, the mortgage lenders want to look at your taxable income, and if you're writing, if you're the, uh, decreasing your taxable income by writing all of those expenses off, then you're gonna put yourself in a bad way, as Carrie would say. So this is a good time to plug any CPA. Mm -hmm, absolutely. If, if I had a particular CPA in mind, I would definitely plug them right now. And if you are a CPA and you're out there and you have any great advice, please put it in the comments below about the, the difference between a 1099 and a W-2. Because I think, especially for self-employed mm -hmm. um, people, we have a tendency to write things off that necessarily doesn't or shouldn't be written off. Right. Because we have to show income. So. I'm not the tax professional, so I'm not going to tell you how much money that you should say that you're earning, but you should be in tune with your bookkeeper and tax advisor. Absolutely. And one thing that we didn't touch on, though, is DTI. Um, and that is also going to play into how much you can afford. And DTI is your um, debt to income. And so depending on the loan product that you're attempting to apply for um, will determine where your DTI needs to be. And um, pretty much is how much debt you have compared to how much income you have coming in.
be funny. Um, but that's also going to play. <laughs> that's going to play into how much you can afford. Your DTI is your debt to income, and it's pretty much a comparison of how much debt you have compared to how much income you want to bring in. And depending on the loan product, um, it, it's best to go ahead and talk to your loan officers to really dial in because different loan officers have different products. Exactly. Which um, is going to vary on the case scenario in the company that you're working with. Absolutely. The lower your DTI though, the better and the more you could potentially qualify for. Absolutely. Um, anything else? And yeah, so when you determine how much you can afford, um, you also want to take your budget into consideration because just because you you qualify for you know five hundred thousand dollars doesn't necessarily doesn't necessarily mean you want to use that five hundred thousand dollars because a mortgage on that five hundred thousand dollars may be more than what you want to spend on your housing. You agree? Yeah. So. This is a great time to talk about the universal conversation about rates. Mm -hmm. Typically, I try to stay away from the conversation of rates, but I think this is a good time to talk about it. So last year, 20, uh, 2021, 2022. Crazy time in real estate. Crazy time, great rates. And a lot of people are expecting those rates to come back and just wait for it. I don't see it coming back. But here's the thing. If your budget says that you could afford $1,500, $1,800, $2,200, no matter what the rate is, you that's what you can afford. That. Right. So you're not going to go out there and look for a house and say, well, the rate is 8, 10, 15. I'm making up numbers because I don't want to be stuck to a number right now. You're not really worried about the rate because you're worried about your budget and what you what you could afford. So if your monthly budget is fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars, that's the number. Mm -hmm. That is the number that um, you're comfortable with, and that's the number you're going to stay with, despite the despite the rate. The best thing about the rate is you could buy now, refinance and get a lower rate, or purchase another house later, or you could look at it as I bought the house now. And the rate, I save myself the rate because if the rates go up, you already have the property and that's not something that you're concerned with. So worry about your budget, not the rate. Absolutely. Absolutely. So those are, those are things that you want to take into consideration when determining how much you can afford in a house. Hidden costs. Let's talk about that real quick. Okay. And when we talk about hidden costs, a lot of people get wrapped around the axle when they're talking about just their mortgage. Mm -hmm. Instead of worrying about just your mortgage, there's also insurance, utilities. So take, for example, some places that you buy, they might have two AC units. If you're moving from an apartment that has, that's a lot smaller with one AC unit, you're not, you're not used to that bill. So that's something else to consider is you're pushing two AC units and you're probably running them really hard until you get that first or second bill. Um, water, something else to take in consideration. Electricity, electricity, so, gas. So as you're upgrading, that's something to take in consideration. So that's something to have in the back of your mind for budget. Not not only that, but some things that people also don't look at are HOA fees or property owner association fees. So that's something else to look at. And also saving for emergencies, you know, water heaters and, and AC units, they malfunction. So just putting a little to the side just in case. So if you're already managing your budget, if you're not managing your budget, this is a good time to start managing your budget at least months out to put you in a good place to understanding what your bills and what your consumption rate is. So when you actually do purchase the property, you are still in line with what you what you bought. Just because uh, you have a great credit score and they tell you that you could purchase something for 500,000, you don't have to purchase five, 500,000 because it's nothing worse than being house rich or was it house poor? Mm -hmm and you can't afford your daily lives or your recreation and what you do for fun. Right, I read a fact, um, can't remember what website it is, but I'll post it below. Um, it did say that people who plan out, they plan for the purchase of their house, are less likely to run into financial trouble later on down the road. So we def definitely recommend planning the purchase. Absolutely. That's so. all I got. That's it? Mm-hmm. All right, so we could uh, 
You can stop it and then we can regroup. 